This video will demonstrate the use of the George Gauge. The George Gauge is designed to help you capture an effective bite for sleep appliances and for functional mandibular repositioning appliances. The George Gauge allows the clinician to capture the protrusive bite registration and vertical opening without relying on your patient to achieve the proper positioning. It will also enable you to have a baseline so you know where your start position is with your sleep devices. The George Gauge comes with two sets of sizes. The white fork will indicate the 5 mm incisal clearance once placed in the gauge. This is the one that is more commonly recommended for your sleep devices. The 2 mm fork is ideal when you are taking your records for the Narval CAD CAM appliance. Otherwise, most of your colleagues will utilize the 2 mm incisal clearance on some of those deep bite cases where you need a little bit more flexibility than the white 5 mm fork will give you. The first thing you'll notice are the two set screws. On the lower, you can loosen that set screw if you need to, if the patient has uh, extensive crown and bridge where it's a little bit thicker or malocclusions. That will allow you to adjust so it seats comfortably on the mandibular portion. On the upper one, this is going to have to be loosened because we're going to place the, in this case, the five millimeter fork so that we can actually get some range of motion with the patient uh, in a forward and in a retruded position. So the first thing you want to do is loosen that set screw, put the edge of the fork in, and then while it is still not tightened, place in the patient's mouth. On the white fork, you'll see a little indentation or etching that will help you line up your midlines. And that's what you want to make sure of because this will be definitely uh, an effect on your appliance if those midlines are off. However, if the patient has a natural deviation, it is always best to mark that on the prescription. You'll notice on the gauge itself a plus and a minus that is even with a 0 to 10 scale on both sides. Keep in mind when the patient has the fork in the mouth and they're exercising back and forth to get to the full protrusion and the normal bite, the plus sign will enable you to remember that that's on the protruded side and the negative sign will help you remember that that's for normal bite. Once you have achieved your two locations, you will add those two together and then deduct 65 or 50% or wherever you want to start your patient. Most times it's at 65% of the patient's maximum protrusion. Prior to placing your impression material on the fork, it is a good idea if you just recline your patient and have them sit for about five minutes with the fork at the location of where your start position is going to be for your oral appliance. At that point, when you come back in the room and the fork is in the patient's hand, then you kind of have an idea that that patient was fatigued and you can actually reset that to a more conservative bite position. Having followed these steps, now you're ready to use your impression material. In this case, we're using the AccuFlow. What you want to keep in mind is to only put your material on the perforated portion of the upper and lower segments of the bite fork. Most importantly, make sure you do not put any of your impression material on the divots where the upper and lower anterior teeth will sit. That will disturb the vertical dimension that you've already measured with the five or two millimeter fork. Once the material is loaded onto the fork, Simply place in the mouth, remembering to line your midlines up with the line that's marked on the fork itself. Remember to record where you took the bite registration as you will need to refer to it for your baseline records. Once your material has set, simply remove from the patient's mouth and just 
take a look at it to make sure that nothing is in that area that will affect the vertical of the bite registration. You can see here on the upper, we've got a nice indentation of the upper teeth and nothing on the anterior region. Same thing with the lower and nothing on the divot for the lower teeth as well. Now you're ready to send the bite fork along with your models and prescription to the laboratory.